Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Morning Brew. Today we're going to be reading out of the first letter from St. Peter and we're going to start in uh, chapter 3 and read verses 15 through 18. So go ahead, grab your Bibles and join us this morning for some uh, scripture reflection. Okay, so go ahead again, you could listen, you can read along, up to you. Again, we're in chapter 3 verses uh, 15 through 18, so here we go. But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it, it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he may lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. Okay, let's read that again. And remember, just listen to what sticks out to you. Here we go. But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for your reason for your hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned with those who defame your good conduct in Christ, may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. So this was uh, the reading the second reading um, in this past weekend's uh, Sunday liturgy. And what stood out to me today was how it said in the, again, I know it's always the beginning that sticks out to me. I don't know. I can't help it. <laughs> but it says, um, always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks for a reason for your hope. So I think it's wonderful and beautiful uh, to hear people's testimonies. I love hearing um, their story, their life journey, and why they are the way they are, uh, especially when it comes to uh, my, my youth leaders or people that I've encountered that just are always at the church and want to serve the Lord. I love hearing their stories because it really gives me insight as to who they are as a person, of course, but it also gives me better insight as to who Christ is, right? Not just in my life, but in their life. Um, and, and it's just so beautiful to hear. Um, and so I think it is important that we are able to articulate our story. And you might think, mm, don't have a story. It's not interesting. And that's further from the truth. The Lord's working um, every day in your life, especially if you're someone that uh, loves the Lord. You might think, well, my, my story is not as interesting as all these other people that have great conversions and that were, you know, once not part of the faith and now are. And you might think, oh, well, I grew up Catholic, so uh, my story is, is pretty boring. And that's not true. <laughs> that's simply not true. The way the Lord works in your life is very different than he works in other people's lives. It's unique. It's a beautiful story that is all your own. And it's important that we share those stories with others because we get a better understanding of who Christ is. For example, I just love even the way that my husband prays and the way that um, my husband experiences the Lord and the way that uh, he came to love God. And by learning that, I learn more about God. It's not just a personal experience. It becomes a communal experience uh, when we share our testimonies. Um, and then, again, though, I, I'm going to go back to the scripture. I love how Peter is telling us how to share our testimony, right? He says, always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks for a reason for your hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence gentleness and reverence, right? So he's not asking us to violently speak at people and tell them that they're going to go to hell, that um, they are, you know, sinners and they're terrible people. That's not what it says. Do it with gentleness and reverence, right? Share your story with people by being with gentleness, right? Understand that it's okay that they don't understand what you're talking about or where you're coming from and be grateful that you know the love of Jesus Christ and pray for those that don't know the love of Jesus Christ 
it's so easy when people maybe poke fun of us for our faith or uh, kind of dismiss us as being innocent or or just kind of naive about the world. It's easy to kind of get like, you know, in a defense mode and be like, no, I'm right. I'm right. You guys are the ones that are wrong. <laughs> right. It's easy to, to get like that. But we are called to share our story with gentleness and reverence, right, to gently share our story with others and to be patient with those around us. Right. I'm sorry if you hear all that noise. It's the garbage man. What can I tell you? <laughs> but anyway, um, I hope this encourages you to share your story with those who um, who wonder about your hope. And I hope that you can reflect and see that the Lord is working with you and that your story is beautiful and so wonderful and so needed in the church, right? Well, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your Monday and we'll talk to you on Wednesday.